Live from London, this is BBC News. Ukraine claims to have made advances in the east as Russia says Kyiv has started a large-scale military operation. Prince Harry to enter the witness stand this week as a legal battle against a newspaper publisher heats up. And spelling in the summer sun, thousands attend an attempt to break the record for the world's largest writing test in Paris. A very warm welcome to the programme. I'm Sally Bundock and we begin in Ukraine where the nation's military says it has made two small advances in the east. This comes as Russia's defence ministry says Kyiv has started a large scale military operation, something that is yet to be verified uh, by the BBC. Now earlier in the day the Ukrainian army uh, released this video uh, which appears to refer to the long-awaited counter-offensive. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Bringing you different stories from across the UK. Picking up rubbish as your... For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. You're live with BBC News. Now to Hong Kong, where police have detained 23 people for allegedly attempting to mark the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown. One prominent pro-democracy campaigner was taken away by police after carrying flowers. Others were detained for holding unlit candles or wearing yellow clothing. Tens of thousands of people in Hong Kong used to gather every year to mark the anniversary, but laws imposed by China have now made such vigils impossible. Well, let's go live to Hong Kong now and speak to our correspondent there, Danny Vincent. Danny, uh, just outline the situation in Hong Kong right now. Now, you would have thought a smile is a natural reaction to situation people but it seems because of the pandemic and the wearing of masks many have forgotten how to smile so in japan for 55 dollars an hour you can learn how to smile all over again using different exercises including physically stretching the sides of your mouth apparently just 55 dollars an hour just smile folks i'll see you in a moment Say play BBC News to most smart speakers and you'll get the latest headlines and in-depth reports on international, national and local stories that matter to you. For your news, when you want it, just say play BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. Oil prices surge after Saudi Arabia and OPEC Group decide to cut production as they look to stabilise falling crude prices. The British Chambers of Commerce sets up a rival business lobby group to the CBI, with the latter facing a crunch vote on its future. The price of war, the ban of Ukrainian grain imports, ends in Western Europe today, but there are calls for the ban to be extended as European farmers fight for their livelihoods. And Queen B hits the right note again. Beyonce entertained another sellout crowd in London last night, with many predicting her Renaissance World Tour will smash all financial records. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock and if you've just joined us you're in the nick of time for the top business stories and we start with oil because crude prices has risen by some 2% after Saudi Arabia and OPEC plus countries announced their cutting production to stabilise oil prices. So Saudi Arabia said it would make cuts to 1 million barrels per day in July which is around 1% of global supplies. OPEC plus countries which accounts for around 40% of the world's crude oil said they'll cut production by some 1 1.4 million barrels per day from the start of next year. But not all members of the cartel are happy about this. Nigeria and Angola both wanted to raise production 
rather than cut it. Well, let's go live to Vienna now where the OPEC meetings take place. Cornelia Mayer is there, Chief Executive of Mayer Resources. Cornelia, always lovely to see you. So just talk us about Talk us through these announcements. Were you expecting uh, these new cuts to come? Now, let's see uh, what else is making headlines in business. Turkey's new finance minister says he will encourage rational policies after recent economic decisions by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and had sent the country's currency to record lows. Mehmet Simsek said conventional economic policies would boost the lira, which has tumbled some 67% against the US dollar in the last three years. And almost £9 billion in old banknotes have not been cashed in across the UK, even though paper 20 and £50 notes stopped being legal tender in October of last year. Paper banknotes have been replaced with plastic ones with a series of security features. The Bank of England says the withdrawn banknotes could still be deposited or exchanged. Check the back of the couch. They're there, get them sorted. Now, in the UK, a new business lobby group has been formed, boasting some of the UK's largest companies as its founding partners. The Business Council, as it's going to be called, has been launched by the British Chambers of Commerce in a bid to design and drive the future of the British economy. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. Hello again, you're live with BBC News. Let's continue with our business coverage now and talk about the fact that the leaders of the global aviation industry are gathering in Istanbul today. It's for the International Air Transport Association annual general meeting, their big jamboree and the World Air Transport Summit as well. She's Holly, I'm double. sorry, we're out of time, which is such a shame because I'd love to pick your brains further on this. It really is quite fascinating. Holly Gleason there from Polestar but we are at the end of the programme. Have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Live from London, this is BBC News. Kyiv claims to have made advances as Russia says it's thwarted a major Ukrainian offensive. Prince Harry to enter the witness stand this week as his legal battle against a newspaper publisher heats up. And these are live pictures coming in from India as movement resumes on a section of its rail network after last week's deadly collision. These are live pictures, as I say, from the scene of the crash. And spelling in the summer sun, thousands attend an attempt to break the record for the world's largest writing test in Paris. A very warm welcome to the programme. I'm Sally Bundock and we begin in Ukraine where the nation's military says it's made two small advances in the east. This comes as Russia's defence ministry says Kyiv has started a large scale military operation. Something that has not yet been verified by the BBC. Earlier in the day, the Ukrainian army released this video, which you're watching now, which appears to refer to the long awaited counter offensive. In the video, the words, plans love silence, there'll be no announcement about the start. That's appearing. Meanwhile, despite the danger in certain areas, thousands of Ukrainians are returning to their homes close to the front line, even though officials are urging them to stay away. Our correspondent in Ukraine, James Waterhouse, has been to the eastern town of Pokrovsk to find out why some there are going home. 
Let's get some of the day's other news now. Search efforts have been continuing at a gold mine in Venezuela's Bolivar State after at least 12 miners were killed in an accident on Wednesday. Part of the site collapsed during heavy rainfall. Over 100 miners escaped. The US Air Force says it scrambled fighter jets in pursuit of a civilian Cessna light aircraft that had strayed into airspace over Washington, D.C. and whose pilot was not responding. The Cessna subsequently crashed into mountains in southwest Virginia. Four people are believed to have been on board the plane. Saudi Arabia has announced a further deep cut to its oil output as part of a broader deal by OPEC and its partner nations to reduce supply, while other countries announced an extension to cuts made in April. Riyadh says it would cut output in July by 10%, its biggest reduction in years. In 15 minutes, we'll have more detail on that story in our business coverage. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Bringing you different stories from across the UK. Picking up rubbish as... For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. You're live with BBC News. The Board of Governors of the UN's nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, is meeting in Vienna this week with Iran and Ukraine high on the agenda. In its latest report, the IAEA estimated Iran has increased its stockpile of enriched uranium by about a ton or over 25% in the past three months. Well, let's talk to Bethany Bell, who is in Vienna for us uh, for this event. Uh, Bethany... Let's talk about Iran to begin with. There's grave concerns about its ambitions, of course, in places such as Israel. The US is watching extremely closely. What will we learn this week? Now, you would have thought a smile is, you know, a natural reaction to people or a situation. It seems, though, because of the pandemic and the wearing of masks, some have forgotten how to smile. In Japan, for $55 an hour, you can learn how to smile all over again using different exercises, including physically stretching the sides of your mouths. They were turning their frowns upside down. We smile a lot here on BBC News. Uh, you haven't got to spend $55 to see that. I'll be back with the business stories next. BBC News, your daily briefing on business and economics from the world's financial centres. From New Broadcasting House in London, World Business Report. Live from London, this is BBC News. Oil prices surge after Saudi Arabia and OPEC Plus Group decide to cut production as they look to stabilise falling crude prices. The price of war, the ban on Ukrainian grain imports ends in Western Europe today, but there are calls for the ban to be extended as European farmers fight for their livelihoods. And Queen Bee hits the right note again. Beyonce entertained another sellout crowd in London last night with many predicting her Renaissance World Tour would smash all financial records. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock and it's time now to focus on the top business stories and we start with oil because crude prices have risen again. At one point they were up 2% after Saudi Arabia and OPEC Plus announced their cutting production to stabilise oil prices. Saudi Arabia said it would make cuts of 1 million barrels per day in July, which is around 1% of global supplies. OPEC plus countries, which account for around 40% of the world's crude oil, said that they would cut production by some 1.4 million barrels uh, per day from the start of next year. But not all members of the cartel are happy with Nigeria and Angola both wanting to raise production rather than cut it. I talked to Cornelia Mayer, she's CEO of Mayer Resources and she's in Vienna for the OPEC meeting. She said many were expecting this news from Saudi Arabia. 
Let's now bring you some other business news. Turkey's new finance minister says he will encourage rational policies after recent economic decisions by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan had sent the country's currency to record lows. Mehmet Simsek said conventional economic policies would boost the lira, which has tumbled some 67% against the US dollar in the last three years. Almost £9 billion in old banknotes have not been cashed in across the UK, even though paper 20 and £50 notes stopped being legal tender in October. Paper banknotes have been replaced with plastic ones with a series of new security features. The Bank of England says the withdrawn banknotes could still be deposited or exchanged. Later today, EU measures banning the impact of we- import, not impact, banning the import of wheat, maize and sunflower seed from Ukraine are due to expire. The ban covers the import of Ukrainian grain to Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, Romania and Slovakia. Denis Woznozenski there from Rubberbank explaining what's at stake. Of course, we'll keep a close eye on how today develops as far as that story is concerned. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. Continuing with the business coverage now, leaders of the global aviation industry are gathering in Istanbul today. It's for the International Air Transport Association Annual General Meeting and the World Air Transport Summit. So according to IATA, overall global traffic is now less than 10% down on 2019 levels. But issues in the industry remain with how strike actions affecting airlines and millions of passengers Holly Gleason there talking about Beyonce's tour. Now let's show you online. There are so many more stories that we cover in business that we don't always have time for in this program. So let's just highlight one of them. This news that this man here, you may not know who he is. Well, it's Joe Benarok. He is a senior exec from NBC Universal. He actually starts today at Twitter. Basically, uh, Elon Musk snapped him up as part of his... Uh, hiring spree since Elon Musk took control of um, Twitter as it were so you can see here Linda Yarosino there saying welcome to the flock from one bird to the next let's get to work so it'd be really interesting to see what he does initiate in terms of what he'll bring to Twitter so much analysis there including all the latest other stories we've written about Elon Musk and his uh, escapades there are plenty of those And there's lots more news on our website, so do take a look. I'll be back a little later here on BBC News with the top business stories. But from me for now, it's goodbye. I'll see you again soon. on BBC News, your daily briefing on business and economics from the world's financial centres. From New Broadcasting House in London, World Business Report. Live from London, this is BBC News. Oil prices surge after Saudi Arabia and the OPEC Plus Group cut production as they look to stabilise foiling crude prices. The price war. There's been a call for a ban on Ukrainian grain imports to be extended as European farmers fight for their livelihoods. And the charity Oxfam accuses rich nations of falling behind on their climate finance pledges and pushing poorer nations further into debt. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock with the top business stories. And we start uh, with oil because it's been on the move. It's headed higher oil prices yet again today, some 2% earlier in the session after Saudi Arabia and OPEC plus countries announced they would be cutting production to stabilize oil prices. Saudi Arabia said it would make cuts of 1 million barrels per day. That will be kicking in in July, which is around 1% of global supplies. OPEC plus countries, which account for some 40% of the world's crude oil, said they would cut production 
by 1.4 million barrels per day from the start of next year. But other members of the cartel are not happy. For example, Nigeria and Angola, who both want to raise production rather than cut it. Let's now bring you some other business stories. Turkey's new finance minister says he will encourage rational policies after recent economic decisions by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan had sent the country's currency to record lows. Mehmet Simsek said con conventional economic policies would boost the lira, which has tumbled 67% against the US dollar in the past three years. Almost £9 billion in old banknotes have not been cashed in across the UK, even though paper £20 and £50 notes stopped being legal tender in October of last year. Paper banknotes have been replaced with plastic ones with a series of security measures. The Bank of England says that withdrawn banknotes could still be deposited or exchanged. So, check the back of the couch. You never know what might be there. Now, rich countries are falling behind on their pledges to tackle climate change, failing to honour their climate finance promises and putting poorer nations into further debt. OK, uh, Jacobo Okaran, thank you. Good to talk to you from Oxfam. Thanks, Ella. Thanks, Ella, for having me. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News, continuing with our business coverage. Now, you may well have heard of virtual reality. I'm sure you have. What about augmented reality? Unlike the digital world of VR, augmented reality blends the real and digital worlds together. It may be about to have its moment in the spotlight because of Apple. It's rumoured to be launching its own AR headset today. Our reporter Ben Derrico went to the Augmented World Expo to see what's going on there in the world of AR ahead of Apple's announcement. It's just fascinating. Honestly, it really is. Holly Gleason there from Polestar. Talking us through just the extent of Beyonce's world tour and the reach it's having, the money she's making, etc. So many more business stories on our website. You can see them there. But that's all from me for now. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye bye.